Good evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? I see seven here. But now eight. Thank you for being on time. I know that the traffic probably has been crazy. We've been having long days of work. So yes, thank you for being here. Welcome to the class, Cecilia, Mario, Carla Mendoza, Carla Daniela, Santos, Cristina, Francisco, Roberto, and Carla Ivan. Yeah, thank you for being on time. We are going to start our class because you're punctual, so we're going to start punctually. So um, let's see. I hope that you have had a very good day. Today is Wednesday. How was your Wednesday? Was it a good day? So, so? Thank you, teacher. It was a good day. Nice. Day. I'm cooking right now. Oh, you're cooking? Yes. Okay. Is that for dinner? Yeah, it's oh. for dinner. Okay. Wow. Well, try to be careful. Are you sandwiches? I try. I try to to join a class and listen and participate and also cooking the dinner and the almost uh, the lunch. The lunch for tomorrow. Oh wow! So you're multitasking. <laughs> um, which I this my mother. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but be careful. Get burned while you're cooking. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we're going to start. Um, well, um, we have been discussing daily activities, uh, scheduled activities, and um, practicing the simple present with uh, frequency adverbs, with germs, etc. So we're going to continue with that topic today. We are supposed to finish, or well, we will finish the section number two. You need to, we have to have it completed. Also the homeworks in the platform and the midterm exam. We're gonna check that um, by the end of the class probably so that um, we can do the exercises together and check that everything is okay. Remember that the due date for this is today at midnight. You still can complete it tomorrow morning, but try not to because probably someone from coordination can uh, may contact you and ask you um, the reasons as to why you haven't completed the, um, the exercises that are expected for today. So let's avoid that and do the exercise at our earliest convenience before the deadline. And um, if you need any help, Remember that there is a WhatsApp group where you can ask for it if you are having troubles uh, with any exercises or the platform itself, you can let us know. And so we have this reading. It's always related to, well, in this case, it's a schedule of a restaurant manager. And we're going to read before, and this is on page 27 of your material. So let's see, the first activity, 9.30 a.m. Remember that this is the schedule. This is a sample schedule of a restaurant manager. At 9.30, open the back kitchen door so kitchen staff can start working. 9.40 a.m. Walk around the kitchen, check temperatures and coolers and freezers. At 10 to 10, create a schedule for the servers and buzzers, with cores that need to be done in their chief individually. Um, at 10 a.m., servers start to clock in. Who wants to continue reading? A volunteer? volunteer to continue reading? No volunteers? Yes, teacher, I can do it. Pero no vi donde se quedó. Okay, I stop on the 10, uh, 10 after 10. Okay. 
30 a.m. Everyone clocks out and have a quick lunch along with employees. And we talk about what their schedule chores for the day. Sigo. Okay, thank you so much for helping us. Who wants to continue? Me. Thank you so much. 10 to 11, everyone clocks back in and start working again. Okay, who wants to continue? I volunteer to continue. Mm. At can five I to continue? Yes, you can continue. Okay. Five oh. to eleven. Open the front door and turn on the open sign. Yeah. Eleven a.m. Mm -hmm. Go to the kitchen and check the temp temperature. What is the correct pronunciation, teacher? Has temperature. Temperature. Temperatures. Excellent. Oh, ready to eat foods and get samples to taste. Okay. Thank you so much. I volunteer to continue reading. Any other volunteer? No, no volunteers? Mi teacher, but este, no vi a donde se quedó, si me ayuda. Yes, in 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Great guest, run register. Maybe run some food and help a server that gets behind. Continue. Yes, yes. please. 2 p.m. o'clock, perdón, 2 p.m. clock out and go home. Assistant manager stay in chair. 4 p.m. clock in break is over. Mm -hmm. 4, 4.05 p.m. Check full temp temperature again, as well as coolers and freezer temp. Continue. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. For 10 p.m., make sh make schedule schedule. No, I don't remember how how do you say that word schedule. 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 Excellent schedule. Okay. Make schedule for a second shift. Servers and visitors. Kitchen heat cook handles him. Perdón, handles his them. Just that. Handles his team. Okay. His Thank team. you so okay. much. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much for helping us. Who wants to continue from four thirty? Until 10, 10. Me teacher. Thank you so much, Carla. Okay, 4.30 p.m. Second chief start, staff start to clock in. Uh, 5 to 9 p.m. Great. Guest told two people, is, is it, is it don't have to run the register in the evening. Have a part time cashier in the club from five to night. That way I fo focus, focus. It's correct, teacher. Focus, mm -hmm. focus. Yeah. on more important things. Mm -hmm. Continue. That's okay, yes, nine, we start. Nine, nine, Night 30 p.m. We start to do side work. A supervisor, everything gets done right. 10 p.m. to turn the open sink off Fine. and look 
sign off and look the front door door and lock if the front door mm -hmm. um, enter credit card tips into the cc processor excellent thank you so much for helping us um, do you have any question about the vocabulary? Yes, what's the mean colors? Or coolers, or, no sé, la pronunciación. Uh -huh. Coolers. 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 Sí. Los coolers son los enfriadores. Eh, algunos restaurantes tienen coolers. Eh, y freezers, vea, los coolers son como esos, um, han visto las, es como una refri con una puerta transparente donde tienen sodas y um, enlatados a veces, a veces tienen botellas, pero ajá, es como una refri transparente donde solo tienen bebidas. Esos son coolers o también hay algunos que parecen una refri chiquita, pero solo son para tener vinos con su temperatura controlada, coolers. Y están los freezers, que ahí sí es para guardar, congelar comida, los, con lo que debe estar congelado. But, ajá, los coolers solo son para cosas que se necesita mantener frías, son enfriadores. Uh -huh. Any other question? Ese sí, acá cuando dice es que short, short, short is, no sé, for the day, oh. Ajá, short is, no sé. Ok, the course, um, esos son como los quehaceres o los oficios, digamos, uh -huh. los quehaceres, entonces okay. crean los, los, los sketches para los servidores, para los meseros y ayudantes eh, con los eh, quehaceres que necesitan ser terminados o hechos en ese shift, en ese turno, individualmente. Okay. Pero eso sí se refiere a los quehaceres. Any other question? That's a good one. That's new vocabulary. Por ejemplo, si queremos decir los quehaceres del hogar, serían the household chores. Any other question? Okay. If there are no more questions, we will continue uh, with this exercise. Uh, it's re uh, related to the reading that we have already um, Let's see, I guess this is a true or false exercise. So let me check the, the instructions and also samples. Ah, I have one question here. Samples son eh, muestras. Uh -huh. Ahí tenemos una pregunta en el chat. Samples son muestras. Muestras. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Is there any other question? And yes, remember that this is in the material. We're going to get there. So it's page 27. And uh, I, uh, I put it there because it, it's easier to follow for me. Now I'm going to share with the material. Okay. This is what we already done. The, the exercise is this one. So we're going to um, write the time for each event. So remember, this is the whole schedule, the whole agenda. So all these activities are included there. What we need to do is to write the time for each activity here. For example, number one, check the temperature at the kitchen. What time is that activity done?
At what time is that activity done? Check the temperature at the kitchen. Eleven AM. Eleven AM. Yes, it's correct. So you have to write here eleven AM. So you can uh have it like this and you write eleven what's AM. Okay, eleven AM. Now next activity it says turn on the lights and sound system. Oh, what time is acti this activity done? Ten p.m. Ten p.m. At ten p.m. No, ten. Yeah, ten yeah. past ten. PM. Uh -huh. At 10 past 10. Mm -hmm. So you can write here at 10. 10 past 10, right? And this is AM, right? In the morning. Okay, so we write 10 past 10 in the morning. Now, make the schedule for the second shift. And what time does it take, Grace? Uh, 4, 10 p.m. Okay. Mm-hmm. At 4, 10. 4, 10 past 4. At 10 past 4. Okay, so we write here for 10 p.m. Yes, in the afternoon. And then we can continue here. Open back the kitchen door. What time is this on? Nine dear I am. What time? Nine dear I am. Okay, let's see. Let's open the back kitchen door. Okay. Right. Yes. Yes. At 9.30 a.m., right? Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Do inside work. Nine thirty PM at nine thirty PM. Yes, excellent. And let's see the last one will be turn on the open side. Ten PM. Turn on. Um, Let's just turn on the open sign. 10, 10, 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. 
Ajá, parece turn off. La que señaló por ahí, Mario, es turn off. And he will need turn on. Ajá. So, uh, it's like, okay, turn on the open sign. I see one here at the bottom. Five to 11? Yes, at five to 11 a.m., right? In the morning. I, for some reason, it doesn't allow me to. Continue editing. Okay, so it is 5 to 11 in the morning. Okay, so you write here. And yes, that is the way it should be completed or done on your end. So we can continue with our review of that. Let me share screen back again. And see. I think I'm sharing. Okay, ready. Um okay. Now um in this next exercise it is uh complete the sentences with the simple present form of the verb in parentheses. So we can continue reviewing that and let's do this together. So it can be easier and faster. Okay, this is what we have. Let me make it bigger for you. If I can. Yes, okay. All right. Okay, now uh, remember that we are reviewing the simple present. So we need to complete these um, sentences using the appropriated form of the simple present. So I'm going to give you some time for you to complete it, maybe in your material if you have it printed, or you can do it in your notebooks. Um, let's do the first one together as an example. For example, here, this, as we can see here, it's an affirmative statement. We have just one third person singular, and I'm using the verb work. So what do I have to write here using the verb in parentheses? What is the correct form? Jeff, and I have to use this verb, work from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. What is the correct form? Verb form. Okay, Carla wrote the chat. So, yes, we have to write it with S at the end because it's third person singular affirmative statement. So, it would be Jeff works from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, I'm going to give you some time for you to analyze and complete the rest of them. And we're going to check them later. I think it's the correct the verb is just clean. No. Oh, it's clean. Esa pregunta por la dos o me dice que ya las terminan todas. No, de la dos. Uh -huh. 
ese solo es clean. No. Uh, yes, because it's Jane and Pete. Uh -huh. Ajá. Okay. Okay.
we finished? Are you need more time? Yes, teacher. Okay, so now you can write the answers in the chat. So uh, we can, well, I think that we already done the number two, right? It says number two, Jane and Pete, as they are plural, that verb will stay the same, which is clean, okay? Because they are plural. Now, what do you have in the number three? Mark doesn't take orders uh -huh. on Wednesday. Uh -huh. So it will be doesn't. And let me get this. Doesn't and the verb will stay the same, right? Because we have the auxiliary. Doesn't take. Um, it will stay like that. Mark doesn't take orders on Wednesday. Thank you so much. And Carla is giving us the answers here in the chat. And they wrote here a restaurant. Open. Uh huh. It would be opens. Like, uh huh. We're talking about one thing. Oh, it's not writing. So it's opens. Because, uh huh, estamos hablando de una cosa. Y esto es un singular en oración afirmativa. So, it will have to be modified. Now, let's continue with the number five. Our boss, our boss, our boss. Uh, sorry, is pants. Correct. Pants. That is correct because it's third person singular. Yes, we're talking about our boss. Um, now, number six, we on Sundays, and it is negative. We don't close on exactly Sunday. Right, we don't. Oh, that's the apostrophe in the D, we don't close. And let me put it here. We don't close on Sundays. And the last one, they. Okay. Expect. So that will stay in the same. Expect. Okay, because it's a plural person, so we do, we do not need to modify the verb here. They expect to have more clients this week. Okay. Sí, porque ahí no se modifica. In which one? En la siete. Ah, porque es un plural. Es ellos. Ah, okay. Solo se modifica cuando es tercera persona singular. He, she, it. Y tiene que estar en singular. Porque, por ejemplo, aquí podemos decir Jane es tercera persona. Pete es tercera persona. Pues ya yes, están juntos. Entonces se convierte en un plural, ¿verdad? En ellos. Jane and Pete. So they clean. Por eso no se modificó acá tampoco. Porque es un plural. Aquí igual es plural. Entonces, solo modificamos cuando es tercera persona singular. Y tercera persona es he, she, it. En oración afirmativa, eh, y tienen que estar en singular. Como decía, aquí en la dos, no están en singular. Ya es plural. ¿Se acuerdan? Solo vamos a modificar el verbo en presente simple cuando estemos haciendo oración afirmativa en tercera persona singular. Okay. Y acá vemos que es tercera persona, pero es una oración negativa y en las oraciones negativas usamos el auxiliar. En este caso, doesn't, que es el auxiliar de tercera persona. Entonces, como ya hay un auxiliar, el verbo ya no necesariamente se modifica. 
y tampoco en pregunta. ¿Ok? Así que, pues, así estamos haciendo nuestro repaso del present simple. And vamos a hacer una pequeña pausa because we need to check attendance. We haven't done that part. So, oh, let me see. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Wednesday. Ready. Uh, let's say present when you hear your name, please. Abel Edenilson Salazar. Abel Edenilson Salazar. Parece que no está Abel. So let's continue con Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. No está conectada Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Ok. Balmore Alexander Marroquín. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Coto. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Cecilia Noemi Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Thanks a lot. Hazel Vanessa Menjiva. Present. Thank you so much, Hazel. Julissa Yamile Pialta. Julissa Yamilet Villalta. Carla Daniela Molina. Thank you, Carla. Ya vi que escribió en el chat. Let's continue with Carla Ivani Anaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Carla. Now, Carla Lorena Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Present. Thank you so much. Let's move and continue with Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Present. Thank you so much. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. It's um right here. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. Melissa Esther. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Mirna Janet Angel. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Roberto Emilio Gonzalez. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Santos Cristina Cerritos. Present. Thanks a bunch. And Victor Noé Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now let's continue sharing screen so that we can complete the next exercise together. Um, I saw something in the chat. It says... Expect. Expect es lo que se espera, lo esperado. Por ejemplo, eh, podríamos decir, I expect to have, ok, Melanie, ok, Melanie nailed it. la voy a poner en lo de la asistencia. Comenta que está en una reunión. So, thank you so much for letting us know, Melanie. Es Expect, ponían una pregunta acá, es uh, cuando esperamos algo. Like, I, I expect to get paid on Friday. So, espero que me paguen el viernes. Okay. I need to have a, <laughs> a lot of money for my uh, vacations. We're almost done. Two days and then we're going to vacations. Um, to enjoy your vacations. So, 
it's necessary to have a lot of money. So yes, expect es cuando esperamos algo. Hay expectativa de algo. Okay. Now, uh, let's see our exercise number two on page 28 so that we can continue with the review of the section number two, which is been about the simple present, is to write a sentence using the words in parentheses. So pick up always tables, change cell down menu, hide rarely new employees, sometimes close early. So we have to use those words to, um, to write sentences and uh, you can write um, what you need here. For example, I just have pick up always and I have tables. Mm, so I can say, um, um, I can say like something like more general, okay. Uh, a waiter, so I need to add the subject, a waiter, and then the frequency adverb, according to what we have said, a waiter always. And then I am talking in simple person, and this is a third person singular. So it picks up. Um, puedo agregar más para que tenga sentido la oración. Entonces tenemos a waiter always picks up the tables. Y aquí hay algo muy, eh, eh, que es importante, como yo lo hice en tercera persona singular, un mesero, um, un mesero, always, entonces tenía que um, hacer la alteración del verbo por simple present, right? Y es un verbo de dos palabras, pick up. A la que voy a alterar es a la primera, pick. Así como ven ahí, picks up. No puede ser pick ups. That's like the first word. La primera palabra del verbo es la que se altera cuando tenemos verbos de dos palabras, como pick up. So that's why a waiter always picks up the tables. Now let's move to number two, three, four, and five. I'm going to give you some time for you to complete them on your own. Es pueden ir haciéndolas y acuérdense, hay que agregar sujeto, eh, usar las palabras que tengamos ahí y algún complemento de ser necesario. Así como ya hicimos el ejemplo uno, you can continue doing the rest and then we're going to check. I'm going to give you some time.
Have you finished? Okay, good. Now, um, John, okay, excellent. Okay, well, um, let's see, um, volunteer, how did you complete the number two? Okay. Thank you for letting us know. Mm -hmm. Pupuserias seldom change the menu. They are so traditional. Excellent. Excellent example. Well done. Um, any other idea for the number two? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, the restaurant seldom share the breakfast menu. Okay. The restaurant seldom changes the breakfast menu. Yes, all the time the same thing, right? Beans, eggs. <laughs> yes. Sometimes puts us tamales, so it's the same thing always. Okay. Luckily, you get pancakes. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you so much. Now let's move to the number three. I volunteer for number three. What do you have? Uh, can teacher. The company okay. rarely hear new employees in years. Okay, excellent. A very good example. Anything um else? Anybody has something different for number three? Mm, pues yo no hay mucho que ponerle, así que le puse my company rarely hires new employees. Okay, very good. Is it a good company, a good place to work? Yeah, that's Happy really good. Happy employees, that maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, are, there are some people that, that have been working in the same company for around 25 years. Oh, wow. So it means Gee. that it's a very good company where employees are happy and feel comfortable so they don't leave. It, they don't yes. easily leave, so that's why they don't need to hire new employees. Yeah, that's why. Awesome. That's Fantastic. Good, good. Thank you so much. Let's see number four. It's sometimes close early. A volunteer? Yo, teacher. Thank you. Um, this company closed early. This company early. And the something? Close. Oh, no lo puse. <laughs> <laughs> it can be after this company. This the company? company is closed early. Sometimes? Sometimes. The ultimo, teacher. No, after this company. This company sometimes closes. Okay. okay. Early. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for participating. Um any other idea for number four? Mm, yes. Hmm? I wrote Wendy's sometimes closes early on holidays. Oh, excellent example. Yes. No true, but it can be. <laughs> <laughs> ya le pasó que se quedó con ganas de Wendy's. <laughs> sí. All right. Yes. I said that some of them, yes, I knew that they close uh, early on uh, probably Christmas. Like, uh, yes, for your campera and some other restaurants, they close early on Christmas, but I didn't know that they did the same on, on the Holy Week. That's Maybe it's not true. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's my imagination. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. 
it's, it's most likely, right? It's most, mm -hmm. probablemente, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, and that's it. Uh, this is about um, going uh, maybe maybe the information or maybe I am inventing, but that's the idea. If I need to invent in order to practice, I will do it. Excellent. That's the attitude. <laughs> yeah, when there's no no situations to talk about. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You can invent them. The idea is to practice. Excellent. That's the attitude. I like it. Okay. Now, number five, give away hardly ever promotional items. What do you have? Give away hardly ever promotional items. Yo tengo that bakery hardly ever gives away promotional items. Ah, yes, excellent. Very good example. Now they they don't even give away a calendar, right? On the seminar. <laughs> 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 okay, it's a very good example. Is there any other example for number five? I take in my company, hardly ever give away promotional items. Items. Okay, excellent. Thank I you so sorry. much. Good. Um, let's see the last one. Close never on Mondays. What do you have? Mm, yo puse Almacén Pacifico never closes on Mondays. All right. Excellent example of that. Okay. Um, anybody else? They, teacher, mm -hmm. um, they almost never give, give away promotional items. Okay. That's for number five. Good. That, for number five. Or I guess so. I someone Melissa has the warehouse hardly ever gives away promotional items. Okay, well done. Well done. That's number five, right? Okay. So and this was uh, the last exercise that we have in our material for this um, section. So uh, we will continue to wrap up the simple present with some other additional exercise in order for us to practice kind of like a conversation because we did not have, uh, well, we don't have more conversations in the material, but it is important to practice. Um, also the simple present, which is our topic for today. So let me, uh, okay. I'm sharing the screen again. So because I added uh, more exercises for you to have more practice. And in this way, we're going to wrap up the topic of the simple present. Okay, we have this conversation and what you have to do here is to read it and we have two options here to complete. You will select the correct option and you can um, remember that you can uh, write it or you can circle the correct options or, or underline it. So the idea for you is to complete the conversation with the correct uh, word in parentheses, and then you will practice in the group. And this is a conversation between Martin and David, and the first uh, part is already done. It says, so, you in downtown, David? Yes, I live with my mother. Ahí tenemos live, ya seleccionado, I live with my mother. ¿Por qué live? Porque, bueno, estamos hablando de la primera persona. Primera persona no necesita S en el verbo. So, yes, I live with my brother. Then we have he, an apartment near here. Would that be he have or he has? Has. Has. Yes. Ese es un irregular, ¿verdad? So, el have cambia a has. Para la tercera persona singular, oración afirmativa. Excellent. He has an apartment near here. And then it continues the conversation. 
Luego continúa, entonces lo que van a hacer en grupos es seleccionar, así como ya hicimos el ejemplo, el, eh, lo, la palabra correcta de las que tenemos en, en paréntesis y luego practicar la conversación. Take turns and you can practice the conversation. These uh, I already send it to the um, WhatsApp group so that you can have it handy and can be able to practice. Complete it and practice. Let me create the room. So just give me one. Okay, one. There we go. Hola. Hello. Hola, hola. Solo busco la presentación, compañero. Espera. ¿No? ¿Todo se la comparto yo? Sí, por favor. Va. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? ¿Me dice si la ven? Ahorita, ya. Ah, ok. Vale. Marta. ¿Eh? Pero completamos los, lo sí. que hace falta. Ok. Aquí, ¿qué sería? En esta. Y has, sería. Oh. Has. 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 Ahí está. Ahora en este otro. Oh, so you walk. So you walk. Walk, walk no más. Walk. Ok. Así. Yes. Va. You walk the world. David, actually, I don't. Don't. Don't walk. Hmm? You work in the morning. Or, I or, take. Or I take a bus. Take. The bus, the bus to work. And then I walk. Walk, walk. Sería, no? Walk. 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 So, so, so I, I right. try, try, bro. Yes. Like a husband doesn't work. Doesn't work. ¿Quién? Bueno, que sería he, he works con Work. ese verbo. Espera, sí. me voy a silenciar el WhatsApp. No estoy. Ya, listo. Uh -huh. Cuando estoy en clase, escribe a toda la gente y no, así no, no querer. Ah, bueno. 
Okay, so he goes, goes. or goes. Ah, se quedaría. Yes. Le Maybe. voy a tomar una captura. O oh, se la mando al chat. Ok. No sé si la puedo enviar desde acá. Ah, pero tengo que dejar de compartir. Ah. Uh. Uh -huh. yeah, sí, porque no tenía so, acceso al chat. Bueno, ahí ajá, se lo acabo de mandar. Tiene que... Ah, ok. You sent it. Ok. Your answers were correct, so yes, you can... Um... Let's see. Yes, there it is. So you can continue and practice the pronunciation. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Well, let's guess. I take the bus to work I and I then I walk. Mm. I take, I take, I mm -hmm. take, I take. walk. ¿De qué? ¿En cuál? But, uh, my husband and I, I, I have have had it. I got it. So I drive or I drive? I drive. I drive. Mm. I drive. Eh, drive. Sin ese. Porque como es en... Es en primera persona. Primera persona. Drive sin es. Sí. Aquí works en el otro. He works. Work. Work. Sí. Works con la S. Work. Ah, no, 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 perdón. No, sí, ajá, tiene, no. es, 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 es segunda. Tiene razón. No, es que ya, ya lo conjuga el DAS. Ajá. Ah, ahí eh, work. Ajá, solo work. work. Ya, yeah, por el auxiliar. Excelente. Sí.
you have the auxiliary there, so you don't need to modify that first. And the locker he worked. Con S. Con S. Con S, sí. He goes, goes. Sí, goes. He goes. Yes. Are you sure? Okay, excellent. All your answers are correct. Now you can practice the conversation. Veamos, ¿no? Vaya. So, do you live down from David? Yes, I live with my brother. He has an apartment near here. Oh, so you go to work? Probably I don't work to work in the morning. I take the bus to work. And I um, then I work from at night. What about? Well, my husband, I have a house in the suburbs. Like, like, oh, suburb. In the suburb. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I drive to work. My husband doesn't work. Don't um, he works in the house suburbs near Howard's house. Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Hello. Este, what is the pronunciation of the word suburbs? It's like that. You did it correct. Suburbs. 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 Yeah. Whoa, suburbs. Like downtown is like downtown. It. Yes, excellent. Downtown. Okay. Downtown. So. Suburbs. Okay. Suburbs. Suburbs. It's como con los. So. Ah, uh, suburbs. 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 Okay, thank you. Oh, 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 
My first preliminary mm -hmm. map, I had a graph that doesn't work. Okay, all your answers are correct. Now you can practice the conversation in pairs. Are you already did that? Yeah, we were practicing ya los tres. Okay, so you just had the question about pronunciation. Solamente era esa la de suburbs and downtown. Okay, suburbs and downtown. Okay. Suburbs. Okay, very good. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, welcome back to the main section. So that exercise was pretty easy. I see that you did um you did it very fast. And yes, it was easy. So let's check the next one that we have here. And the next exercise is let me go to this slide. Well, this is pretty easy as well. It's just we've been checking and talking about schedules, um, activities that people normally do. So we have um, here a sample of, of a schedule. In this case, this is uh, Brian's schedule, the weekly schedule. So we have the date here and time and the frequent date that he does all these activities. So for example, you see here, it says 8 a.m. and it says the get up. This is the activity. So he gets up at 8 a.m. from Monday to Friday. So all these days. So the arrow indicates um like the 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 period when this activity is um um it's done, like in this case, you see it starts on Monday and finishes on Friday. So it's, it, he does it from Monday to Friday. So we have uh, a sentence here it's for the number one. We need to write what does he do at eight o'clock and, and the frequency, right? In this case, it's every day. So the sentence says, he gets up at eight every day. So we see here the example. Now, in number nine, look what happened at, uh, sorry, number two at nine, number two at nine, what it would be the sentence. It says, ¿Cómo nos quedaría la oración? You can write it on the meeting chat. Write your sentences. He goes to work at nine every day. Excellent. He goes. He goes to work at nine every day. Good. 
Now, the number three, noon. Do you know noon is mediodía, right? Noon. Noon means like 12, um, 12 p.m. movie. He has lunch at noon every day. Excellent. He has he has lunch at noon every day. Excellent. Well done. Number four. Number four. Three PM. He drinks a uh, coffee at 3 p.m. every day. Excellent. Well done. Thank you so much. Number five at 5 p.m. He finishes work at 5. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you can add every day. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now let's complete the number six. Number six. Six Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, he goes to school at 6 p.m. On, on Mondays and Wednesdays. O se puede poner como con un, un adverbio de tiempo, o solo así Mondays and Wednesdays. Oh, ah, yeah, ya, just like, think? no? So, the one thing you said is, está bien, porque está dando los días también, so it's correct. So, ahí no necesitamos un frequency adverb. No, no, it's not necessary. Okay. So, that's good. So, the sentence would be he. He goes to school at 6 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Number seven. Tuesday. He plays um to uh, six pm Tuesday and Thursday. Uh-huh. So remember, uh-huh, the two propositions, right? Uh it says he plays tennis at six pm on on Mondays and Thursdays. Excellent. Very well done. And the last one, the number eight. He has dinner uh, with her friends. With his friends. Uh -huh. uh, at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. Uh, on Fridays. On Fridays. Excellent. He has dinner at 6 p.m. Well, he has dinner with friends at 6 p.m. on Fridays. Excellent. Uh huh. Now, this is, uh, I think, this is one, uh, uh, and uh, this is the last one. And in this one, we need to write the questions according to the answers. So we need to read and understand the answers to write the questions. So, for example, the number one is done for us as an example, and we can um we can do the number to as well. So you see here the number one in part B, it says, no, I don't live alone. I live with my family. So the question for that answer would be, do you live alone? Now in number two, the answer is yes. My family and I watch television in the evening. So what is the question for number two?
do you watch television in the evening? Porque ahí you puede ser como ustedes, ¿verdad? Yes, el you puede ser ustedes. So, pueden poner do you, ya, ya abarcando todo, ¿verdad? Do you um, watch TV in the evening? O puede poner nada más do you and your family watch TV? También, like, como para ser más específico. Do you and your family watch TV? Yes, my family and I watch television in the evening. Is this clear what you're going to do with this part? Ah, si está más claro que van a hacer en esta parte, ya tenemos el uno y el dos. Okay, I'm going to create a breakout room so it can be easier. So you write the questions and then when you have all the questions here, you can practice because this is a conversation. It's a conversation, but the first thing you have to do is to write the questions and then you can practice in the groups. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Going to make it bigger breakout rooms because I see that I still have so many people like listener. Perdón que me hayan escuchado. ¿Mande? No, perdón que me hayan escuchado y estaba peleando con mi hija. Espera, <risa> puedo compartir. ¿Cómo se hace? Que me cuesta en estas cosas. Voy a, voy a compartir yo, no sé si ya les aparece. Ah, vale. uh -huh. Sí, sí aparece. Vaya. Vaya. Vamos por la tercera. En la primera, que en la segunda dijo que íbamos a escribir. Um, dijo que podría ser, do you watch TV with your family? Do you watch family? Do you watch television with your family? Mm -hmm. Your family. Why? Mm -hmm. right. the third um... You say, yes, I get up late on Sunday. Tal vez <coughs> puede ser. Do you get up late on Sundays? No. Yo creo que es parecido a la, a la pregunta. No lo, no lo van anotando en la, en la presentación. Fíjese que no la puedo anotar porque es como, no sé, una... Eh, váyase a insertar el cuadro de texto. 
Ahí, ahí, ahí agrega por donde está la línea. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Como soy en la chicharra aquí. <risa> Como dijimos, como le dije que era acá. Yes, my. Do you watch TV with your family? Arriba. Do you watch television with your family? Ay, no le puedo poner el signo. Vaya, ah, pues esta tal vez podría ser. Eh, you, este tal vez, do you get up late on Sundays? En la tercera, yes, I get out like on Sunday. Yes. Sí. Yes, that's your sister, that's what. Teacher. Yes. Tenemos una duda con la anterior que estábamos haciendo. No sé si, si estamos bien. What time you get up? What time? Um, le falta algo. El do, exacto. Ajá. Pero llegará. Yes, correct. Do you get up?
Y esta. Mm, pudiera ser. Does your sister walk to work? Walk de caminar. No, lo que te está, te está diciendo la respuesta, no, si la sentáis. Ajá. Que ser. Entonces, no. Tiene que ser preguntarle. La pregunta sería: eh, ¿Does your sister take the soup? Correct. Does ah, ok. O does she? Como ya lo mencioné anteriormente y siguen preguntando: ¿Does she? Does she? Ajá. Ah, das, sí, se puede, ¿verdad? Sí, porque como es casi que siguiendo a la pregunta anterior, veas una pregunta, mm -hmm. su, ella dijo sí, pero antes para evitar de sister otra vez, mm -hmm. does she take the subway? Ok. Do you father? Uh, does your father work on weekends? Work on weekends. Does he works on weekend? Yo digo que does he works on weekends.
sí. Works con ese. Pero lleva el DAS. Lleva eso, ¿eh? Ah, lleva el DAS, okay. cierto. Oh, sí. Does your mother and has a, no. has a yo. no sería has has your mother a yo sí. does your mother have ya no se conjuga has porque por lo mismo que decíamos claro, verdad claro. este el auxiliar have Does she use public transportation? Next, number seven. Do you have? Do we? Um, sería no. do you? Porque no, le está you. preguntando a ti si yo, ajá. Uh -huh, y ah, dice okay. sí, nosotros. Ajá. Uh -huh, so you can. Pueden poner, do you have lunch together on Sundays? Almuerzan juntos los domingos. Do you have lunch together on Sunday? Yes, we have a big lunch on Sunday.
Ay, perdón, estaba hablando en mudo. Together es P-O-G-E-T-H-E-R. Together, hasta ah, Together ah, estamos ah, bien. Ah, es T-H. T-H. Together. Yes, excellent. Perdón. Las máquinas de cubo. Ah. <laughs> sí, hablamos. What time? Uh, Do you have lunch? Teacher, I have a question. Ah, ya se cerró. Okay, what is the question? Es en esa, la número cinco. Nosotros le pusimos does he work on weekday? Gracias. Habrá otra forma de preguntarle así como qué días trabaja o algo así. El Gracias. trabajo. Porque él solo responde he works on weekdays. Ok, dice, no, mi padre no trabaja los fines de semana. Entonces le preguntaron, does your father work on weekends? O sea, sí está bien la pregunta, pero usted la siguiente. Quiere... La siguiente, does he work on weekdays? Y la respuesta no es sí o no, sino que solo dice he works on weekends. O sea, habría otra forma de preguntarle qué días trabaja. ¿Sí? ¿Cuándo? Perdón, no nos alcanzó el tiempo ahí para chequear esa pregunta. Ok, me decían, no sacó de un solo. Ok, uh, me decía la, la cinco. Eh, la cinco, ajá, en la primera, eh, si le, le pusimos la pregunta. Bien, porque está la, la de, donde contesta no, my father doesn't work on wicked. Uh -huh. Y la siguiente, que si habría otra forma de preguntarle, eh, ¿qué días? ¿Qué días trabaja? Yes, um, it would be like, ahí les escribí, when does when, your father work? Uh, cuando trabaja. Ah, él trabaja los días de semana. Ah, oh, he works. On ah, work. sí, porque es así. Yo tenía varias dudas también. Ajá. Ok, entonces para es, los que eso, tenían eso dudas. Estamos, ahí, mis, eso estábamos debatiendo porque no le damos lógica a, a la hora de formular la, la pregunta. Sí, cuando ustedes les quieren hacer la pregunta a, a, a quien sea que ustedes le quieran preguntar eh, como qué días trabaja, ¿verdad? Eso nosotros eh, lo hacemos en español, decimos qué días trabajas, pero en inglés no podemos decir what days do you work. So la pregunta en inglés es when do you work? When do you work? Y ahí usted dice, ah, I work from Monday to Friday o I work on weekdays and on weekends, or I work on weekdays and Saturdays until noon, for example. Hay gente que trabaja todos los días de la semana y sábados hasta mediodía. I work on weekdays and Saturdays until noon. Yes, pero esa es la pregunta. Cuando queremos saber qué días o cuándo es que alguien trabaja es when do you work? When do you work? En este caso, como estamos preguntando por, uh, por lo, eh, cuando trabaja tu papá, when does your father work? When does your father work? Oh, he works on weekdays. Any Thank other you. question? I think that was the, the, este, esa fue la única, ¿verdad? Que le dio, porque estuve entre grupos, estuve un rato en cada grupo y vi que pues hicieron un muy buen trabajo, por ahí de repente se, se iba algo, pero con, lo recordaban y decían, no, es que es así, por esto y esto y esto. So you did it great, lo hicieron muy bien. Y pues espero que este repaso les haya sido de ayuda, este refuerzo para el presente simple. 
Y pues vamos a chequear asistencia una vez más. Ya casi es hora de irnos. Uh, so let's see. Give me one moment. Ok. Abel Edenilson. Present teacher. Thank you. Abigail Elizabeth. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. No response. Ok. Um, uh, let's see. Balmore Alexander Marroquín. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Coto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecia Noemi Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Thank you. Hazel Panessa Mejibar. Present. Thank you. Julissa Yamilet Villalta. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Daniela Molina. Present. Thank you. Um, Carla Ivania Anaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Lorena Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilina Alejandra Grande. Mario Ernesto Ramírez. Present. Thank you. Melania Alexandra Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Let's see. Melissa Esther Orellana. Present teacher. Thank you. Mirna Yanet Ángel. Present teacher. Thank you. Roberto Emilio González. Santos Cristina Cerrito. Present teacher. Thank you so much. And Victor Noé Bonilla. Present teacher. Okay. Thank you so much. Ok, para ahora el one on one es Carla Daniela Molina y pues okay. espero que puedan completar los demás los ejercicios de la plataforma. Acuérdense por favor, sección 1 o 2 debe estar terminada y eh, eh, el midterm exam. So, yes, if you have any question, you can uh, write in the WhatsApp group. And we will glad to assist you. Thank you for joining. Remember, we just have a, a Thursday and Friday, and then you go on vacation. So please, please, please don't skip classes. See you tomorrow. Teacher. Yeah. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Solo, solo yeah. una consulta. Um, hay, todavía tengo un problema con una de las de las preguntas que tenían que ordenar la número cuatro. No la, no la he completado. La número cuatro de, de la plataforma o de... Sí, de la plataforma. Pero la número cuatro de qué, la tarea sí, cuatro de, o de qué unidad? De la uno. De la uno. Ah, sí. esta ya la habíamos... Sí. Eh, le, le voy a mandar en el WhatsApp. Okay, no, okay. si no lo pueden escribir para poderles ayudar, porque yo creo que eso ya lo terminé. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok, ahí le escribo, Carly. Ok. Ok, gracias. Thank Good you evening. so much. Good, uh, good night. Sleep well. Y ya me iba a salir, teacher. Yes, I know that you're tired, but thank you for. Uh, <laughs> Se me olvidó que iba yo. <laughs> Thank you for staying a bit more. And how are you feeling with the classes? Is there any question, any topic that you find difficult? Mm, siento que me cuesta un poquito los conectores, como para, para digamos, expresar mis ideas mejor. Eso. Pero estoy tratando de mejorarlo. En Instagram sigo unas páginas de inglés y ahí dan eh, expresiones que que pueden salir bien prácticas para uno. Ah, ok. Entonces, yeah. eso. Uh -huh. Solamente eso. Y la hora. La hora siempre. Después. La hora. Sí. <ríe> <ríe> por eso ayer, ayer sí estaba poniendo atención, pero por rato se me, se me chispotea. Se me va. 
Sí, fíjate que la más común es hacerlo como en español, ¿verdad? Eh, pero sí es importante que conozcan las dos, porque de, de pronto sí es necesario y, y surge alguien que o en algún eh, momento utilizan esa como que se oye a veces un poco más formal. Pero en eso solo hay que tener en cuenta que se mencionan primero los minutos y después la hora, ¿verdad? Y te, la, lo que les mencionaba, ¿verdad? Que la primera parte de, del reloj es past o after. Puede usar past o after y de ahí de la media hora para acá usamos el to. Y es práctica. Sí, eh, últimamente estoy tratando de practicar. En mi trabajo llegan clientes que no hablan nada de español y solo había una muchacha que hablaba un poquito de inglés conmigo, pero ella nunca lo usaba y aunque viera que los clientes necesitaban ayuda, o sea, decía la loca. ¿va? Y yo no, o sea, yo trato de practicar y la gente se va contenta y me da propina. Que es oh. la mejor parte. <risa> That's the best part. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was talking uh, with a, um, ¿cómo se dice diplomático? With a? Diplomático. Ah, oh, you can say with a diplomatic person. Yeah, she was a diplomatic person that um, she's going to travel to Africa in, in this month, I guess. So um, she told me that um, they appreciate that uh, some people can help them porque no muchos no muchos les pueden ayudar porque al menos en mi en mi ámbito laboral o sea quién quién va a querer saber inglés para vender tela va pero uh -huh. llegan o sea, estamos en una zona donde llega gente bien delicada y de otros países y todo entonces me sirve bastante yes of course So, uh, and the, the very important thing is that um, el, el miedo es lo que, lo que nos frena y, y es una barrera que usted, pues, la felicito porque no, no ha permitido, ¿verdad?, que esa barrera la interfiera con, 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 su, eh, con su objetivo, ¿verdad?, y pues ya ve los beneficios, pues, propinas y, yeah. y ahorita pues lo vemos así son propinas pero de frente eh, se puede promover verdad la pueden promover uno nunca sabe o encuentra un lugar mejor donde ya pues ya usted va con su inglés pulido y esta gente y es lo mejor que uno puede hacer porque me, nosotros mm. eh, usted está practicando también su listening está practicando speaking, puede incluso incrementar su vocabulario. Eh, le cuento así rapidito porque yo sé que está cansada. Eh, el inglés es más que todo la práctica. Uno aprende lo básico y a comunicarse aquí, ¿verdad? Pero uh -huh. luego la experiencia y, y usted amplía eh, en la práctica, ya más allá de de haber cumplido con, con su programa, haber llegado al avanzado nunca se deja de aprender y se aprende más con, con con esto, usted que trabaja con telas, se dará cuenta que hay miles de colores que ni siquiera los conocíamos, ¿verdad? <risa> Entonces, este, sí y esta gente pues es, es bien abierta a ayudarle a uno que nunca lo vamos a saber todo, ¿verdad? Porque no somos sí. hablantes nativos que incluso hay cosas que no, ni siquiera la, las pensamos en, en, en Uh, yo trabajé en un lugar donde tenía que ver con lo de los colores porque se vendían mm. uniformes eh, en ese lugar y se vendían uniformes y había un, una también división de restaurantes de, eh, que era food service y entonces a mm. veces nos llamaban, nos llamaban clientes y también los vendedores. Entonces mm. resultó una yeah. vez llamó un cliente preguntando okay. por un uniforme y que quería saber si estaba en color peacock. Y me dice una compañera, ¿Qué, ¿cuál es el color peacock? Y yo, peacock como es un cafecito, un... ¿verdad? No, es un... el peacock, es, es, usted sabe, se escribe, tal vez ya lo ha oído, um, ¿ese? ¿Sabe qué es? Sí. Es un pavo real, ¿verdad? Es en serio. Peacock es un pavo real, ¿cuántos colores tiene un pavo real? Sí. Entonces yo le digo, peacock. 
pico, es un pavo real, busquémoslo en Google. <ríe> Inmediatamente ponemos pico color y era un verdecito así como este que ando. <ríe> Ah, entonces son, eran los Strauss los que usan los, los más que todo en los quirófanos se ve bastante ese color, ese, ese colorcito entonces y eran uniformes de esos los que vendían, entonces yo, ah pues sí es, decirle que sí Yo hay escuché uno así, mire, y era como un bellito así bien clarito, y yo, que okay, pues, chicas iba a saber. O sea... ah pero el wet, el, el, la, la última palabra, el wet es el trigo, verdad, y el trigo es como beige, ajá Ajá, ah, pero pues. yo no sabía, o sea, hay muchas palabras que, que no sé. Y uno la va aprendiendo con eso. Y otra vez me llama un señor y me dice que el vendedor quería saber, te voy a dar un código y busqué en el sistema, me dijo, y me decís que, que, que te da la descripción. Y me dictó los números y en el sistema salía table cloth. Era un, un el table cloth es un mantel. Uh -huh. Y el color uh, decía, uh, este, y yo, Dios mío, ni en español sé qué color es. No sabía pronunciarlo en inglés, yo no sabía. Y le estoy diciendo, y ahí sentada trabajando en el call center. Y yo le digo, oh, the description, it is a tablecloth and the color is mauve. ¿Puedo decir eso Me dijo que lo diera otra vez. Y yo, no puede ser. Y yo dice, ah, mauve. Y yo, oh, mauve, ok. Yes, you got it. Y me ayudó a pronunciarlo. Ay, qué lindo el de. Ah, sí. Sí, entonces sí, ellos... sí, yo así voy aprendiendo también. Porque con esta, con esa muchacha que le digo, habían palabras que ella me podía decir en español y que yo le podía decir en inglés. Y una sola ensalada. Y así como yo le enseñé a ella, ella me enseñó a mí. Yes. That happens. And, and you feel that rewarding. Uno siente una satisfacción eh, mejor que el dinero. Cabal. Exactly. Yes, and the people is happy. They uh they are happy and you are learning and happy at the same time. So it's yeah. it's, it's, good it's great. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can continue practicing and there are some websites. So you say that you want to practice connectors. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look for some exercises and. I'm going to share the web. Uh, okay, let me check if I can find one. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you know how can I look for a uh, vocabulary um, relacionado con mi trabajo, con telas? Mm, not exactly with clothes um, um okay here you can have some online exercise of some connectors in este link eh, si gusta lo copia ahí o en algún blog de notas ahí y luego si usted le da more exercise le va dando más y algunos tienen como eh, los puede como auto chequear a donde puede Ay. encontrar bastante vocabulario que es de donde yo a veces saco algunos ejercicios como el que decimos ayer se acuerda uh -huh. ok lo ve. y ahí va a aprender bastante vocabulario esta es una aplicación usted la puede descargar en su celular eh, la, la busca uh -huh. en la app store o play store uh -huh. Esa, así se llama la aplicación. Entonces ahí se encuentra una variedad de topics. Encuentra de enfermedades, cosas médicas, ¿verdad? ¿Se uh -huh. acuerda que está viendo hypertension? Y esta palabra nos dio problemas porque es una enfermedad tan común yeah. y no la sabíamos pronunciar en inglés, ¿verdad? Hypertension. <risa> so you, sí, you can find articles about diabetes también. Artículos uh -huh. de la diabetes. Eh, puede encontrar noticias del mundo. Entonces usted va a aprender un montón de vocabulario de diferentes cosas. Eh, de qué noticias de lo que está pasando, enfermedades, temas de que la tecnología, que los avances, que el nuevo celular, que bullying, temas así de todo va a encontrar ahí. Y lo bonito es que le da el podcast, usted puede escucharlo. 
Y a veces lo salen como presentando. Eh, ok, Carla, ¿escuchaste acerca del nuevo lanzamiento del nuevo iPhone y las críticas que ha recibido por el catálogo? Y a Carla, oh, sí, que no sé qué. Y usted está escuchando y lo puede leer también el transcripto. Y hay un apartado de vocabulario, como las palabras que se consideran que son nuevas. Entonces usted eh, ahí explore esa aplicación y le va a encantar. Y Ah. linkeada... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Esta... I was trying to improve with my Instagram on my social media. Uh, I have it in English. And I follow some pages uh, about uh, science and uh, space. and the medicine. Okay, awesome. And there is a, the other one is six minutes English. You can download it as well. And uh, it sends like reminders. Okay, if you allow the notifications, it, it sends you reminders that you need to practice your six minutes English. Okay, and it keeps Okay. it keeps you until you do the, your six minutes English. It they stop sending the reminders. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so yeah, that that's good because especially on vacations we forget about everything. So you say <laughs> you forget about English, and then we Venimos go en to blanco. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So probably you can try them uh, during vacation so that you can practice at least six minutes English. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, could I make it be? sure of that. So, Always, okay, always check have those time things. because Uh-huh. um, I want to tell you something. When I visit my grandfather, um, he lived um, many years in the USA, so uh, he learned English and he teaches me. Awesome. And we practice speaking and some vocabulary that he knows that I can use. So I doble saldo. <laughs> Dos pájaros de un tío. <laughs> Voy a la playa como mucho y aprendo más. Awesome. Yes, it's just amazing. And you're lucky. Not many Yeah, people that's have that why opportunity. I think that I can improve my fluency a little Yes. bit more. I know about a lot of people that is in the United States or have lived there for many years and they do not speak English. They probably understand, but they do not speak because um, they and they get like, uh, uh, they get in the comfort zone. And as they live probably in Los Angeles or whatever, there's always a Latin person. And they see Yeah. you. And maybe you want to practice and they speak to you and then they talk to you in Spanish. So you use Spanish as well. And many people Sí. don't have that when they never No, learn. él es bien inteligente, él aprende inglés y árabe. Mm, so he might Sí, pero ahí sí no me meto porque digo mal una cosa y, y peligroso. dangerous. <ríe> no, inglés. <ríe> sí, es lo único que no sabe cómo escribirlo. Sí lo, sí lo habla muy bien, muy bien, pero la ortografía como que le falla un poquito. No. Okay, so that's interesting. Así que ahí yo le enseño a él. <ríe> Okay, good. Now, um, so, well, about connectors, check that link and also maybe you can try those up. Maybe they, they're going to like you, maybe not. If not, you just <laughs> eliminate them. <laughs> and, and then if there is something else I can help you with, let me know. No, no te preocupes. Okay, I, I appreciate your help, your advice. Okay, thank you for staying and for your time. So before we finish the session, is there any other question or comment? No, not really. That's all. Okay, thank you so much and see you tomorrow, Carla. Take care. Thank you too. Have a rest. Okay, <laughs> you do the same.